Not very nice. Upstairs was getting impatient. I can't see properly without all my eyes in. Burke was balanced precariously on the huge mountain of flesh that was his master's belly, busily cleaning old flabby Gruffick's best eyeball. It was hard work. The eyeball was nearly as big as Burke. Nearly done, old fattage, he replied nervously. Oh, I hate cleaning his eyeballs. This was a job Burke didn't like at all. The eye was like a huge, slimy ball. He was never quite sure if it could still see him while it was out of its socket. Right, I finished, said Burke, struggling to pick up the eyeball. Now, which head did I get it from? Him upstairs was getting angry as Burke fumbled around, trying to manoeuvre the eye into position. Hurry up, he shouted. Burke jumped, startled by the explosive roar. Oh, glob it, he thought, as he felt himself slipping. I'm going to fall. And then he was gone, sliding down over the huge stomach. Thump, he hit the floor, and the eyeball slipped from his grasp, rolled out of the door, and bounced down the stairs. Oh, glob it, muttered Burke as he watched it disappear. Are you in trouble now? Down in the cellar, Boney and Drat were listening to the commotion upstairs. Oh, dear, said Boney. What is Burke up to now? Drat made an excited, popping sound. The huge eyeball bounced in through the archway, hit the far wall, squashed Drat, bounced off the oven, squashed Drat again, bonked into Boney, and vanished down the trap door, which, as usual, Burke had left open. Oh, dear, oh, dear, moaned Boney. Burke's in trouble now. That was him upstairs, best eye. Oh, dear. Get my eye back, boomed the terrifying voice from upstairs. You stupid Burke! As him upstairs ranted on, Boney became aware of a distant rumbling coming from the trap door. Drut jumped up and down, popping and squeaking frantically as the rumbling grew louder and louder. The whole cellar began to shake. Pots and pans fell off the table. Goodness! exclaimed Boney and fell over backwards. The rumbling grew louder still. Dust and stones fell from the ceiling and cracks appeared in the walls. Scuttled off to hide under the oven. An almighty blast of hot air erupted from the trapdoor, splattering the cellar with lumps of gooey green stuff. Boney was sent hurtling into the air and landed head first in a pot of grilled nets gherkins. My word! he exclaimed. Oh, globbits! shouted Burke as he ran down the stairs and into the cellar. He skidded on the gooey green stuff, lost his balance, and disappeared down the trapdoor. Watch out for the gooey green stuff, shouted Boney. Too late, shouted Burke, as he tumbled down into the horrible blackness. Burke fell down and down into the dreadful depths beneath the trapdoor and landed with a thump in the wet, slimy mess at the bottom. Oh, oh, that hurt, he muttered as he staggered to his feet. He looked around. It was very, very dark. All around him he could hear strange noises, eerie, frightening sounds, distant grunts and roars, weird moanings and groanings. Something slippery slithered slowly over Burke's foot. Oi, get off, he shouted, shaking his foot. Oh dear, I don't like it down here. As Burke felt his way around in the dark, he began to realise that he wasn't alone. There was something next to him. Something very large breathing slowly in and out. Burke's eyes slowly became accustomed to the darkness. Lying right next to him was a gigantic red slug. It was so big that he couldn't see where it ended. Its huge, lipless mouth quivered and dribbled. Glowing red eyes stared down at him on the ends of long antennae. Hello, said Burke nervously. Oh, I, I, I don't suppose you've seen a, a big eyeball down here anywhere? The thing said nothing. But as if in answer to Burke's question, its gigantic body began to quiver and shake. A rumbling sound seemed to begin deep within the creature. The rumbling grew louder and louder. 
Even the floor began to shake. Oh, dear, said Burke. He don't sound too well. An almighty, explosive blast of hot air erupted from the vibrating beast, sending Burke flying off into the darkness. It was a long time before he landed, splattered with the oozy green stuff that he'd slipped on in the cellar. He's got a nasty cough there, said Burke, struggling to his feet. I wonder where I am now. He looked around in despair. Oh, Globbits, how am I going to find old Wobble Gruttock's eyeball now? He'll go bananas if I've lost it. Burke was jerked from his thoughts by an eye that blinked open in the darkness. Ha! Ah, there it is, he said with relief. Then, just as he was about to reach out for the eye, another opened. Then another. And another. Burke looked around. There were eyes everywhere, watching him from the darkness. They seemed to be getting closer. Oh, dear, all these eyes need to be attached to something horrid. Burke started to run. He ran as fast as he could back towards the slug thing. He seemed to run for miles, sometimes bumping into moving things or hopping things with big teeth and running right over slimy, slithery things, squashing them flat. Burke skidded to a halt in what appeared to be a large cave. Oh, 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 dearie me, he panted. I'm lost. I'll never find my way back now. He looked around in despair. This was not a very nice-looking place. The walls of the cave were all pink and knobbly and soaking wet. Everywhere were lumps of the strange, gooey green stuff, and the floor felt soft and spongy. As Burke strained to see more clearly, he suddenly noticed an eyeball looking at him from the back of the cave. Well, I'll be, exclaimed Burke. It's old Wobbly's eyeball. He squelched his way over to it. The lost eyeball was wedged in the mouth of a tunnel of some sort. I've been looking for you everywhere, said Burke, relieved. I wonder how it got stuck in there. It's a good job him upstairs can't see where his eye is. He'd go raving rancid. Burke tried to free the eye, but it seemed well and truly stuck. He pushed and he pulled and he heaved and he tugged. He even tried kicking it and thumping it, but it wouldn't move. But something was moving. The cave was moving. And he realized it wasn't a cave at all. Great Grumfuttock's tufts! I'm inside the mouth of that giant red slug! Flabby Gruttock's eyeball was stuck in its throat, making it cough. It was about to cough again. The ominous rumbling began deep within the creature's belly. It grew louder and louder and louder. Bert turned to run, but too late. Oh, Globby! Burke shot upwards, blasted by an almighty gust of hot air. Up, up, and out into the cellar. He hit the ceiling with a terrific thump and fell back down to land right on top of Drat. The eyeball landed on top of them and they were covered with the gooey green gunge. Ah, you found the eyeball, observed Boney, who was still stuck in the pot of grilled nets gherkins. Ah, I found the eyeball, replied Burke. He was stuck in the gob of some horrible big thing. It's just as well him upstairs didn't see where it got to. But I did see Burke, came the booming voice from upstairs. I could see everything, and I'm very, very angry. Oh, I hate eyeballs, said Burke.